Mr. Mass, thank you for your service to this country. Uh, we not only appreciate you, but I think uh, I think that your uh, duty to this country is yet to uh, really embody the rest of your career, and I know you're on gauge in that now. Wish you wish you good luck on that. Jones recognized. I thank you for those wishes, Chairman. Truth be told, most days I couldn't believe I was getting paid to do the things that I was doing. So it was the honor of my life. I, uh, I come to you today with four amendments to defense appropriations. All of them circled around something every single one of you have sitting in front of you, and that's clean water, something that affects every single one of us, every single one of our constituents. Uh, first amendment goes to Division D, number 24. Uh, this is an amendment that replaces a $500,000 shortfall to last year's appropriation to the, uh, to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and their research and their development arm. Uh, and it's a, a researching uh, measure to prevent and control the, uh, the nuisance plants, such as harmful algal blooms, uh, some of which have plagued my area, some of which have plagued areas like Lake Erie, some of which have plagued areas like uh, down there by uh, the Mississippi River Basin, other areas like that. My second amendment goes to Division A, number 49. This amendment goes to the uh, Navy's research arm, similar to the, the U.S. Army's research arm. This is the Navy's research arm for, for testing and development. And this amendment replaces the $598,000 shortfall from last year's appropriation. Makes some pretty important investments. And again, curbing these, algal, these, these harmful algal blooms, often uh, algal blooms containing things like microcyst and algin uh, that, are, uh, that are very harmful to the, the water with, that we drink the communities that they affect, uh, the, the real estate values, the ability to go out there and have recreation, the ability to, to get in the water whatsoever without being harmed uh, both uh, by the toxins that come off of that aerially and the, and the toxins that are in the water. My amendment number three uh, goes to division three, it's number 23. This amendment specifically increases Army Corps of Engineers uh, Research and Development Center dollars again to the tune of $500,000. Uh, this is the only federally authorized research program that's directed to develop technology for the management uh, uh, of these non-indigenous aquatic plant species. So if the, the Corps of Engineers isn't out there doing research on combating these algal blooms that affect people across the, the breadth of this country and the water that they drink and the water that they're in, then there is not a, a technology arm uh, out there within the federal government that's, that's developing the technology to do that. Uh, it's been an excuse that I've heard from the Corps of Engineers previously about why they haven't been able uh, to, to undertake uh, efforts to clean up some of the algal blooms in different places because they simply didn't have the technology to scale what they could do in a fish tank to sometimes in cases as much as uh, a hundred, uh, millions of gallons a minute. Amendment number four for me. Division D again, uh, amendment number 32. And this amendment is specifically appropriates 750,000 to the lakes program. That's been authorized since 1986 in WERDA every single year uh, to provide cost sharing grants to state projects. So you're gonna get a, a benefit in, uh, in working with the states on these projects. Again, to remove toxic, toxic substances from the lakes. Uh, and, and these programs, uh, they were actually uh, designated to be appropriated at $40 million per year. We're asking for 750000 uh, 750, less than 2% of what's already uh, 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 authorized in this grant program for removing toxins from our nation's lakes. Uh, it's all amendments relating to the water that we drink. It's important to everybody out there. So it's in that that I just ask every member of this committee to take a long look at where the water is that they drink, uh, where it comes from in their district, in their areas, for the people back home, and uh, if this is something that's important to them. Thank you, sir. I yield back. Thank you, sir. Uh, do you sit on the Appropriations Committee? I do not, sir. I sit on the Committees of Transportation and Infrastructure and the Committee of Foreign Affairs, sir. Okay. If I could ask the gentleman, Tom, has this been a discussion in appropriations of some university that really specializes in these, I don't know who's better able to really understand this. Chairman, I don't actually sit on the relevant subcommittee, so I don't know. But, uh, uh, but uh, you know, we'd, we'd need to check with one of them. Is there a university that uh, really, it, it, you're asking the Corps to do this, not to offer a grant to do it. <coughs> would, would you expect that they would go actually go to something in, in a university or academic setting to figure this out or 
would you expect that they would hire somebody and do the work themselves? So, sir, uh, on the, the technology front of it, there are uh, various private entities and there are as well uh, universities that have been out there. Uh, I, I reside in the state of Florida and I can tell you some of our biggest universities and colleges have been out there uh, doing research. It is specifically the U.S. Army's Corps of Engineers, their ERDIC, their, their engineering research and development arm uh, that has been brought to my attention by the Corps of Engineers saying they have not developed that testing arm has not developed anything that could allow them to scale the kind of removal of toxins, uh, as I pointed out, like we might look at a fish tank, the way we can remove algae and toxins from a fish tank. Their research and development arm has not seen any technology that would allow them to go there out there and do that. And so there I have four, I believe. The Interesting. Interest on them. Yeah, I didn't know whether you'd say EPA or what you'd say would uh, have some of that. Find it most interesting. Mr. Pogles? No, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, any member of the committee? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Chairman, gentleman, if, Dr. if I Curtis. could, and I was going to ask the gentleman when he first started into this series of amendments, uh, I was curious as to whether we were talking about salt water or fresh water. Uh, sir, we're specifically talking about freshwater algal blooms, uh, those that uh, often are moved into saltwater areas uh, because sometimes uh, some of the areas that, that they're developed in are moved into areas that are meant to be salty, but they put so much fresh water because of Corps of Engineer discharges uh, to the tune of, again, uh, millions of gallons a minute that, that can actually turn a saltwater area fresh and allow these toxic freshwater algal blooms like microcystin algin to exist in what was otherwise a, a salty body, body of water. Okay, so the stuff that we read about, like the, like the red tide, that's not what you're, that's not what you're discussing. Uh, you could probably lump that into the conversation because uh, it's saying a, a cart and a horse conversation. Uh, you're talking about things that exist in the same bodies of water, often at the exact same times, often in parallel or, or, or one after another. Well, Mr. Chairman, in answer to your question, let me just offer that the University of North Texas, back in the days it was called North Texas State Teachers College, had one of the premier limnologists ever in this country, Dr. J.K.G. Sylvie, and he made a name for himself studying the effects of blue-green algae in what was then Lake Dallas, and now has expanded to Lake Louisville. If you're familiar with it, because we went out there to the dam together. Yes, sir. Um, but every summer when I was a kid, uh, the water smelled bad. It wasn't supposed to be dangerous. It wasn't supposed to hurt you. It just smelled bad because of the growth of blue-green algae in, in the lake in the month of August, um, and Dr. Sylvie spent his lifetime studying that. I think they eventually, and I'm, it's been years since I've thought about this, uh, so you've kind of tapped something in my memory, but they came up with a way of superoxidation with potassium permanganate to take the smell out of the water, if I recall correctly. So this is something that, uh, again, I know my little university in, in, in Denton, Texas, has had some experience to answer the chairman's question. And of course, uh, again, Lake Louisville, which you're very familiar with because we've been out there yes, to the sir. dam together. Sir, if I may comment on that. Uh, the algal blooms that we're talking about here are not small in size or, or small in scope or small in, in their effect. Uh, this problem is not ambiguous to me. I've witnessed it personally in uh, numerous areas from Michigan down to Florida. These kind of algal blooms that very specifically plagued uh, the, the Florida region last summer and, and are plaguing the Florida region right at this time, uh, they were as deep a, as a foot thick in algae that had the consistency literally of guacamole. Algae that was so thick that birds or other animals could walk on top of it that killed off the sea life, that killed off the seagrass, which housed thousands of species of sea life, that killed off things like manatees, that killed off birds, that killed off anything that went into it, uh, that resulted in, in, in a number of bacterial issues that, that resulted in hospitalization uh, for citizens across the area. In uh, Lake Okeechobee last summer, one of these algal blooms was roughly 30, mi 30 miles in diameter. Uh, or rather in radius. Uh, there's an algal bloom similar to that that's developing out there right now. So, so I'll tell you, this problem is not just related to smell. It's related to sea life. It's related to human health very specifically, and not just in terms of whether somebody enters the water, but also in terms of what they're breathing. Well, if the general, I, w I was not trying to minimize the problem that you're experiencing in Florida. I was only pointing out to our chairman that 
there is a, a university that has studied this issue not far away from where he lives, just for your consideration. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And I'll yield back. Any other member seek time? Thank you very much. We appreciate you uh, bringing serious uh, information, some that I'd really never known before. Tom? 